I was adamant um, that I was going to be a video games developer growing up when everybody else was trying to figure out what their career was going to be for the rest of their life I always went to the careers advisor in school and said to them I want to be a video game creator how do I do that and no one knew um, back then back in the years of the Super Nintendo and the N64 no one knew exactly how to uh, become a video games designer it, it wasn't one of those careers that was um, readily available back then but that didn't stop me I created level designs, character designs, and how the thing would work using the controller, and every time they brought out a new console, I would up the ambition and, and go with the times and create it. And I, I, I was, this document was, I don't know, about three or four folders, massive, filled, ring binders, filled with ideas and how it would all, I was so in depth. I often go back in the attic and sort of look at it and go, wow, Billy, you put a lot of effort into this. Um, but yeah, I sort of sat down and, and um, went through them all, all the notes, and the uh, I, I did everything level by level and created and constructed this video game, and I could sit for hours, and I'm so sorry for the people that had to listen to me. <laughs> Let's go through it. But I had I sat for hours and sort of explained it to people. Ultimately, what I found was when I was explaining to people the video game, they were more interested in the characters and the story than they were how it would play. And as I got older and found it more and more difficult to find my way into the world of video games design, um, I transitioned into other walks of life, but Raiden Destiny stayed with me. It was my passion project. It was my, um, you know, it's what, what I wanted to do. I decided to listen to the feedback and create just the story, flesh out the characters, drop the gameplay aspect and just sort of make a book out of it. And I tried other media first, I tried, you know, comic books, cartoons, short stories, animation, all of that stuff. And I just found that learning those skills was getting in the way of me creating this complex world that I was already building. I didn't find myself to be a good enough artist to be a comic book um, artist and write it as a comic book. I am I can do, you know, I'm pretty proud of what I've created on a character by character basis, um, but doing panels, that's a whole new level of complexity where you got, you know, you, 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 you can't just draw one character once and be done with it. You need to draw those characters in many different angles and many different ways to be able to construct a comic book. And I just wasn't up to the task to be able to pull that off. Uh, respect to anybody who does that as a living. It's incredible what you managed to do. And then the, obviously animation is its own thing as well, where you not only have to draw these characters from all different actions and areas and positions, you also have to animate how they breathe and how they move and how their hair and clothes move. and. Again, I just did not have the talent to pull it off, nor the team or the or the manpower to get there. So eventually, I decided to to, to land on a novel. That's something I could train myself to do, uh, to be able to share the story with you. And I spent many years refining that technique, learning how to write, how to describe myself, how to articulate my my world in a way where you could enjoy it within the pages of Raging Destiny. I uh, obviously there's a, that big transition period of moving from video game to animation to novel, uh, but the other side is I needed to flesh it out. I needed to make sure that the, it was big enough for the world of novel, where where you can, as difficult as it is to make a comic book or a cartoon, there are certain shortcuts you can take within that kind of illustrated world. You don't need to explain every picture. You don't need to. You know, explain what someone's wearing, or, or you know, there's this colour you can use as shapes. When you're doing it in a novel form, that's very difficult to sort of explain everything and and get that across in the same way. Um, so to ensure that everything made sense, I constructed this timeline, and it must have. I I got all these post-it notes and I was put them on my walls. Um, I say walls because it was more than one one wall. But I used to put the timeline of, of events up on my wall to sort of explain to myself and keep track to myself what would happen next. And I, I now look back and then people must have had visions of me, you know, that meme with that guy with the board 
and the cigarette in his hand, and he's sort of he's explaining the controversy. <laughs> it's all these lines on the wall. I must have been looking a bit like that guy as I was sort of moving post-it notes around and going, no, that can't happen here, it has to go there. But yeah, I, I sort of mapped out the entire timeline of the of the entire book's franchise to make sure that everything lined up. And even now, it's still a challenge. Even now, I find that it's it's exciting to move those events around, and I try my absolute best to make sure everything makes chronological sense. Um, but at least I have a, a blueprint of where they will go, and as I go through this journey of writing the rest of the series, I can always lean on that timeline to give you know give me some gravitas and make sure that I know what I'm talking about and where we're going, and not get too sidetracked from it. Thank you.